right, Mr. Bergman, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing super awesome. It's awesome to be here because really chemistry uh, is awesome. It is. Uh, so just to get to know you a little better, why don't you just tell me something that you are afraid of or scared of? You know what I'm afraid of? I'm, I'm kind of not too high on like enclosed spaces. Uh, I once when I was a, a young teacher, I took some kids on a splunking trip. It scared the it scared the whatever out of me. It was so I, I'm like crawling through this thing and I'm I'm almost having panic attacks and I had to like squelch it down because I'm in charge of a bunch of uh, you know uh, you know middle school kids. It was I was totally terrified. How about you? Uh, is, it, is it bad that I felt uh, claustrophobic while you were telling that story? Uh, I am scared of heights, which is not something you want to admit. But here's something fun about me is that although I'm terrified of height, and there are videos to show this, I will jump off of anything or go up to any height one time. So there's not, even if I'm terrified, I will, I will jump off the edge of a cliff, which I have, whatever. Um, I don't know what that means exactly, but uh, don't dare me to do something because I'll do it. Okay. Hey guys, today what we want to talk about is physical and chemical changes. So last time we talked about matter and we talked about how they can change a little bit, right? We talked about, well, we didn't have about a change. We talked about how you can have different states of matter and you're going to see how that makes a difference. And when we talk about physical and chemical changes, well, you know, we got physical and we got chemical. Mr. D, I need some help. What's well, physical? What does that mean? Physical change. Just can you define it, it for really us? Really simple. And we'll define one thing, and like we do in chemistry, we'll define one thing and then say the other thing. Well, it's not that. So let's say a physical change is where the identity of something doesn't change. And I assume then this means it means the exact opposite. Uh, the anti-definition we like to say it, where chemical change is where the identity does change. Identity, I, Mr. Bourbon can't spell. So the identity doesn't change, the identity changes. Ah, I mean, like they change their name? What does that mean? Mm, well, I think we have some examples of that. Do you wanna, wanna take a look? Yeah, at let's, I think the first example is, let's watch um, the first one. None of us is gonna think that the steam coming out of this is some different formula. Water is H2O, we don't say that steam is somehow H3O, correct? Similarly, we call that a physical change because it definitely is making a change from a liquid to a gas. Remember our piece of paper from before? The, the life of one we just did? If I take this piece of paper and rip it, we don't think that it's now something different. Paper, paper, physical change. All right, so what was happening there in the boiling water is H2O liquid, L stands for liquid, is turning into H2O gas. Notice it was H2O before, and it was H2O afterwards. So the identity didn't change. All right. What are some other examples of physical changes that we could talk about that uh, students might be well aware of? Well, you just showed an example right there. Every single change is a physical change. So you just showed here a, an example of going from a liquid to a gas, but going from a gas to a, a solid or a, or a solid to a liquid, all of those are physical changes. The identity does not change. So what are some other examples of physical changes? Well, actually, any time that we do any uh, state change, it's a physical change, right? All right, state change. That's important. You're saying something, state change. We talked about states in the last video, solids, liquids, and gases. So when we have a state change, liquid to gas, that's boiling, right? But what are the other state changes? Well, there's a whole bunch. We can take a look down at the chart here. Uh, but the most famous of them would be like going from a solid to a liquid. We call that melting. Solid to a liquid is melt. Okay. Well, then I can also go from a liquid to a solid, right? That's called, now here, this was liquid to gas. What about gas to liquid? Now, tricky question. There's also ones where you can sort of skip. This is a weird one, guys. You can go from a solid to a gas or from a gas to a solid, and those have names. So solid to a gas is called? Oh, sublimation. <laughs> so solid to gas is called what, Mr. D? Sublimation. We'll learn more about these later, folks. And then gas to solid, opposite is called? Deposition. Uh, a good example of the sublimation is if you ever played around with dry ice. Yeah, dry ice, when it, you, you put it on the table, it sublimates. It's going from solid carbon dioxide to gaseous solid or uh, carbon dioxide. Now, those are uh, 
physical changes. Are there other ones that are not, these are all state changes. Are there other ones that are not state changes? Well, of course, anytime you, you make a change to something and that any doesn't change, you have a physical change. If you take a piece of paper and cut it, or if you bend something, um, any of these things. So bending, cutting, those kinds of things. All right. Chemical changes are a little bit different though. The identity changes. And so it turns out that when we talk about chemical changes, folks, there's a few sort of tells that tells you that it's going, that you have a chemical change happening. What's one, Mr. D? So we're talking about the evidences for chemical change. And one would be uh, uh, heat is given off. All right, heat given off. So if you see heat given off, um, tell you what, let's watch a video. Go again. Check out this other way to know that you have a chemical reaction. So I'm heating up a piece of magnesium and I'm not looking at it directly because it's such a bright light. We're actually burning. So the evolution of heat and light is an indicator of a chemical reaction. Notice that all that's left of that piece of magnesium, which is a metallic substance, is a white powder. And so, folks, what happened in that is the magnesium reacted with the oxygen in the air and it made magnesium oxide. That was the white powder that we saw. By the way, you might say that doesn't make sense. This is now balanced. And it's the white powder, which is a solid. This was a solid and this was a gas, and notice it started with Mgs and Os and became MgO, and so what's going on here, folks, is that something, you started with two things and you came up with something else. I know they have the same like letters in there. These are called elements. We'll talk about that in a bit, but this is something new. All right, Mr. D, what's another evidence or tell, if you will, to know that you have a chemical reaction? Um, how precipitates formed. Okay. Precipitate just a fancy way of saying a solid or liquid is formed. Usually a solid is formed. Well, let's take a look. One indicator of a chemical change, take a look, two clear solutions. I pour them together. <laughs> look at that. Woo! What we've got is we've got what's called a precipitate. This is a white solid that over time will settle to the bottom. So folks, in that case, we had uh, PB stands for lead, nitrate, you know, three. Again, you don't know what all this stuff means just yet. And we had this thing called KI. And the key thing I'm gonna just write down it may be PBI2. That was the white powder we saw and some other things. But notice it, it isn't the same thing. This and this become this and something else. So it's changed what it is. Identity changes, right? Number three? Uh, gas is given off or evolved, we like to say. Let's take a look. Another indicator of a chemical change is illustrated by me mixing baking soda and vinegar. So I've got the baking soda in the flask. I'm going to pour the vinegar in here. Whoa, look what's happening. What's happening is a gas is being given off. And as the gas is given off, indicator of a chemical reaction. In that reaction, we had baking soda, which is NAHCO3, and it reacted with acetic acid. Again, you don't know what these all these symbols are just yet, but the key thing it gave off was CO2 gas. And that you know, kind of hard to say where it all came from, but there was CO2 gas that got, it was in these elements and now it's being given off. Uh, that's a tell for one. And I think there's one more we want to talk about, right? Uh, color change. Yeah, you see a color change. Again, let's take a look. So let's do an example of a chemical change. So we're going to take a penny before 1982. Any importance why this is before 1982? It's pure copper. Pure copper. So we're going to throw that into our delightful beaker. And then we're going to take some very, very concentrated nitric acid. This is stuff you do not play with. You do not want it on you. And I'm going to pour it in here and see what happens. Focus in on that penny real quick. What do you see happening here? El green, it's turning a green. See the bubbles there as well? Oh no, brown gas. By the way, guys, whenever you see colored gas, it's you dangerous. You run, there's no good color gas. Now this right here, this is the main ingredient in smog. Uh, you guys don't have this as much here in Texas, but where I come from in California, you do. Fun fact here, you can you be, can you smell it where you're at here? Yeah, this is some pretty, pretty nasty stuff. Very irritating to the eyes and nose. Uh, in a very little time, you see how it's, uh, uh, rising up the side of the, the, the container and it's starting to, to bubble out. Uh, my first time I did this demo, I did it in a classroom at the front of the room. Uh, I want to know what happened. Uh, I ended up having to run out in the hall and put it down on the floor to uh, avoid gagging and it was my very first experience teaching so I learned never to do that. Now we can, if you watch down below here, can you touch at the bottom of this? Let's use your hand to touch this as a, an observer. It is hot which is another example here and if you can see right now it's going to keep on generating more and more of this and what was sort of interesting about that video that we just watched, Mr. Mr. D, that was interesting about with the color change video we just saw. 
Yeah, uh, essentially all the all of those things that we just talked right. about. Heat, heat was given off, right? There was uh, some solid precipitate form, definitely the brown gas, and it definitely changed colors. So sometimes you get to see all of them in one spot. I think that's pretty awesome. So, Mr. D, I'm kind of uh, claustrophobic and you're uh, hydrophobic or whatever the word is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the word is. But uh, hopefully uh, we're not chemical-phobic because we're going to get to play with cool chemicals. Uh, we might even get the chance to set each other on fire or something. I don't know. Do some weird stuff like that because that's what chemistry is. It's kind of fun, right? All right. Hey, guys. We don't have a problem. You don't have a problem. You guys are awesome. We are so excited to have you in Costas.